Welcome to the Genting Highlands. It is absolutely beautiful up here from five and a half thousand feet. Good morning, Malaysia. We're ready for day two here at ESL One Genting for the elimination day. It is, of course, four matches today, all best of threes. All of them count. All of them will see teams eliminated. We're looking for two more semi-finalists after Newbie and DC made it through yesterday. They'll have a day off today, but not for us. Not here on the desk. Oh, no. We are back once again to present you the analysts on our desk. Welcome back to all three of you. Um, we're going to get into our first game very shortly. Obviously, it's a, a big match for Fnatic, big match for AMP as well. Um, Owen, first off, we'll start with you. How did you assess both of their uh, games yesterday? Very hard, obviously, with just best of ones. It, it really was. I mean, that, that's always the thing when you're coming into the second best of three. After we've only seen a best of one, and of course, because it's this newer patch, we've not really seen anything or much at all from these teams before. So, so when you kind of look at the two teams going ahead, I think you kind of just have to look at the stability and such, and obviously that favors MP. They've got this lineup, they've stuck together, Fnatic, they've made these changes. So it's even harder to, to gauge how good Fnatic's going to be here. And, and I think that for, for me, in terms of the players, in terms of the teams, I'd favor MP in this matchup. Okay, well, let's focus on Fnatic to start with. Um, Kevin, I, difficult to assess them because of the changes in the roster and obviously coming yeah. in so fresh. And, uh, and what have you. But the other flip side of it was people were saying to me, oh, I think you're wrong. They, it's a new patch. That makes it a bit more of an even ground. But yeah. that, that must mean make it tougher, isn't it? it, were, it could. were the people you talked to by any chance Malaysian? Because that might be <laughs> Some biased. of them were yesterday yeah. Malaysian. Yeah, there were well, some Fnatic fans that I spoke to yesterday. I, I think the way that this matches up between NP and Fnatic uh, on that topic is that uh, the way that NP played yesterday was very much a 6.88 game. They grabbed Trion Protector, they grabbed Lunacary, they played the old meta because it was the best of one, they're probably looking for something safe. On the other side, Fnatic went for Lina support. Again, they have a stand-in, normally plays core. He played a very farm heavy, did a great job getting last hits, did die a couple times, typical like new role swap, but I think Fnatic's playing more aggressive, at least pick-wise, for the new meta. NP played very standard. I hope that both teams will play uh, out there a bit, theorycrafty for the actual best of three. Um, but I feel like NP, once they do get a little out of their comfort zone, they might have more success there just because they have been together longer. Whereas Fnatic could have a lot of boomer bust on their five position on some of the other roles. Mm. Yeah, um, Jacob, you've got a little bit of uh, history of playing some of these players in Fnatic. And I know that you, you sort of rate them back in the day. How have, how, how have they transferred to 2017? I'm actually happy you brought that up because if we look back historically, like years back, the sort of playstyle that we expect this patch to benefit is actually something that Muji has had the best results with uh, in TIs and, and stuff like that. So the Which whole is? going very aggressive early on, having spell-heavy okay. heroes that and, and, and heroes like Bounty Hunter and TA that can that can dominate in the early game. Back then they also used Wind Ranger. I hope they don't this time around. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but heroes like Lina, Sanking, stuff like that, where they just go for like you, you you get your six and then you just start killing people all around the map and they they're heavy on the rotations and just go for kill more than do, they do tower pushing. I'm I'm not even sure that the the meta is solidified in that way yet though. I'm, no, no, I, I I agree that it's not, but I think it'll it'll benefit them against this particular team. I don't think that it'll it hold up against mo many of the other teams in the tournament, but I think against NP, that's the way you you want to punish this team because they are fairly slow in, in how they rag up early on. Yeah, I would say they're very methodical around the map. They, they play very much a, we know where they're going to be, we're going to use tactical advantages like living armor to keep our towers up, that way whenever we take fights we always have an advantage and closer TPs. They do stuff like that, whereas, uh, like you said, if Fnatic does just run at them and keep taking fights, I feel like NP will make more mistakes because some of their players are a little bit weaker on individual skills sometimes than, than other top teams. Okay, how do you feel like Febby has started his Fnatic career with these boys? I mean, you know, obviously we saw the game yesterday where I believe he played uh, his bounty hunter, yep. um, and uh, obviously they didn't win. Um, but for Febby, I think you've got to look at him as he needs to be that big playmaker on this kind of roaming role. We saw yesterday how important it is for heroes like uh, the Muranos, the Weavers. Yep. It pretty much wins or loses you the game because, as you said, there's, you're going to hit this 15 minute mark, and at that stage, you're, you're kind of looking at that position and you're saying, Well, what have you managed to achieve? Has this Weaver been killing people, or is he building two Aquilas? You know what I mean? It's, it's at that stage <laughs> of the game where you not kind bad. of reflect. <laughs> it's not bad. But it's at that point. So for Febby, I think there's a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to see him on the bounty hunt again. I think even though he lost the game, it is one of his strongest heroes. I think as well, you've got to kind of look as, uh, towards heroes like the Ayo. Uh, I think that arguably is probably his best hero. And that's something that I think with the lineup of Fnatic, you can utilize very well with kind of the aggressive plays of Mushi. So something like that would fit him really nicely. Okay. Yeah, Owen brings up a great point. I think the four position is very important for this current meta, especially because it seems like a lot of teams, especially Virtus.pro yesterday, struggles with finding that 
particular four position hero that'll open up the game for them. We saw Lil didn't really have any influence on the game against uh, Newbie yesterday, and whereas Misery completely took control yeah. against yeah. Wings. Yeah, I think this is the right train of thought because a four position is can basically be in any lane. Uh, the, the most successful ones are the ones you can go to the off lane. Off laner is almost always a little leveled, almost always has full HP because of the shrine. If you just show up there tactically at the right time and get your off lane a kill, changes everything, can help you shut down the carry. You can do that mid, you can do it safely, and you can do it off lane. So the best four positions right now can be very active, can make perfect decision making for how they spend their time in the early game, and they make impact on every lane, which gives them that 20 minute win. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, MP. We didn't see them on the main stage yesterday. Uh, Always difficult when you transition from back to, to main stage. Sometimes that proves a little bit jittery. They've got plenty true, of experience. Yeah. They, they do. Teams. I don't think they're going to have any issues with that. They, they've got a lot of old boys in there. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing MP play on the main stage. This is a team that there's no denying, incredibly entertaining to watch. Uh, there's a couple of heroes that I want to see them play. I really want to see MP pick up the Queen of Pain. We saw yesterday how good that hero yep. can be. SCCC performing on it. Envy, incredibly entertaining on the hero. He can win games even when he misses the sonic waves, which makes it so brilliant. So I'm looking forward to, to him getting on kind of that, that real playmaking mid, something that's going to be able to keep him on on par with uh, whoever Fnatic would move, because I believe they have a flexibility between In Your Dream and Mushi. Uh, but either one of those, whoever he gets the matchup against, something that can perform the plays, make those rotations, and have that early impact. Mm. Did yep. you say that he missed his? He does miss his he sonic does, wave sometimes. He does miss his sonic wave. Envy or? Envy does. Envy. Oh, yeah. Envy. Not, not S triple C. I thought you, you S triple C, <laughs> he doesn't like, miss a no thing. Way. He didn't miss a single one. No, no, no. no. S triple C doesn't miss anything. Oh, OK. Yeah, well, it's been known. It's been known. He misses top eight sometimes. Along, along with some missing blinks. Did he? I don't know if you saw that yesterday. No, I, I okay. didn't. Okay. We'll move on because Jacob obviously doesn't play any Are we talking Envy or, or SC yeah. again? I turn on Envy. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that I Did believe. See that? Okay. It's still SC that I can't, like, like, he didn't do any mistakes. Oh, no, SC doesn't do mistakes. No, no, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's not aware in his vocabulary. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll close that one out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of the way that they're, they're, they've been formed and put together, there's a lot of fun around the way that it came together, obviously, Jacob, and uh, a little bit of drama around it as well, which obviously we love in Dota 2. Um, th these guys have got to prove themselves at some point. 2017 is a big year for all of them. What, what, what drama? We're still talking about SC. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused now. It's so hard having a Counter-Strike analyst on this. Oh, yeah, there we go. No, I, I, yeah, I don't Visual think... aids help. I, uh, so this I, th is, this I think is they've NP, proved themselves as the, as the second best North American team, though. I think they've sort of knocked complexity out of that position. So in that regard, I don't think they're in that much of a pickle to prove themselves. Really? Yeah. OK, hold on. Uh, yeah, Melons, yeah. OK, apparently Melons wants a word with you. What? Well, he's like at the bottom of the barrel of America. Wow, wow, really, Bottom Jacob? of the barrel. Yeah, he can call me all he wants. I can tell him to his face. <laughs> we, okay. we need Straight that panel. talking from Jacob. I love it. He's not even here to defend himself. That's not on. I think NP is a good team. I think they have a lot of talented players. I just don't think they can measure up to the best teams here. OK. Why? Because their players aren't as good. I think they, strategy-wise, they, as, as Kevin said, they're good at theory crafting. They're innovators. But they need to be in order to beat these teams. OK. I would, say, right. I would say they're not perfectly refined. Um, I, I love to talk about how Envy can throw, yet still play amazing and have amazing impacts. But it will cost you some games, where you start the game 0 and 4, and then you have to come back from that versus playing ahead or being one, one to zero or two to zero or something. Like those little advantages or those disadvantages completely change the game. Mm -hmm. Envy is sometimes a boomer bust player. I get the sense of where you're going, all three of you, in terms of predictions right now for this particular game, but we're gonna do it anyway, Jacob. NP or Fnatic? It's close, but Fnatic. I'm gonna say and NP, I think. I think they have a slight edge just because of uh, history, them being the team longer. All right. I'm going to say MP, and uh, quite confidently as well. I think it's going to be 2-0 for MP. I mean, I just strongly disagree, but or that's mostly because I believe in Fnatic's playstyle. Okay, well, the community are uh, going with Owen. Yeah. It's 54-46. This is my question. narrowly as well, though. It is yeah. it's very close, yeah. Who, who's going to have the fan support in this arena? I actually don't know. It's, I think it's going to be close. Yeah, difficult, isn't it? Because yesterday I was surprised by the fact that DC had probably the loudest cheering of any of the teams here. Which is, I thought, a little bit unusual. I thought Fnatic would have come out and everyone would have got behind them. But DC didn't play any Malaysian team. They didn't. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's we'll true. have to see how that stacks up. But yeah, Eternal Envy obviously got massive amounts of fans out here as well. I'd be very disappointed if they didn't root strongly for Mushi in mm. compared to NP. Well, let's find out, Jacob, because Eri is ready on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to introduce you to our two teams.
Welcome to day two of ESL One Genting, and you guys have showed up again. Give yourselves a round of applause. You guys are awesome. Good morning. Welcome to the arena of stars. That's right, feeling like a star. Do you feel like a star, sir? Do you? Do you? You do stand up. Stand, you, yes, stand up. Feel like, look, wave. He's a star, look at him, yes, beautiful. I was talking about the guy. I was talking about the guy behind you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it's okay, Hi. You're, 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 you're amazing. I was looking, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, stand, stand, stand. Come here, come closer, come closer, come closer. It's okay. <laughs> Have a seat, buddy. Make some noise, Malaysia, let's do this for day two. Are you guys ready? We're gonna get started now, introing your first team. Come on, show them some love. It's your very own Fnatic! Fanatic, good luck to you guys. Their opponents make some noise for TNP! Show some love for Team NP! Here they are, looking great. Jackie, the usual outfit. He's not cold because he has hot sauce in his veins. He doesn't feel it. Doesn't feel it. Team NP. Day two of ESL One Genting. Fanatic versus Team NP. Here we go. Why is it that Jackie always looks like he's just got out of bed, Jacob? He always looks a bit surprised, doesn't he? He's like, oh, what are you guys doing here? The entire crowd is just suddenly there. He's like, am I not still in my bedroom? It's great, it's great. I love the fact that he's just so laid back and chilled. I was watching him in here, a um, mark of professionalism on his behalf as well. And lot, not a lot of people understand what goes into being a pro player these days. It's very difficult to understand just how other many commitments they have other than just playing the game, right? And they were in the day before, and Jackie was at the top of the arena, and they were doing shooting around him, and he just had this face on him, which was just like... Just, just utter vagueness, but he was just in his zone, right? He was doing all these you know, shoots and everything else. He's just such a pro, he just, uh, just does that stuff. And all of the players do that, by the way, it's not just it, but all of them are doing that as well. Hours and hours and hours of just standing around and having filming stuff, it's, in, it's incredible. I just, I thought I'd bring that up because it was, you know, a lot, a lot of people say, oh, he's very larry and he does all of this drama stuff, but, you know. So, Paul, you're saying they're, they're really good at looking bored for hours at a time. Absolutely, when they're not playing Kevin, video they games. are professional at doing okay. that. Professional. Yeah, I'm gonna agree, I think they're good at it, yeah. yeah. I mean, we stand here looking bored talking to you for hours at a time. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get into the draft very shortly. Um, Kevin, um, thoughts on the draft and the, the way that these two can play this? It's best of three, so it's changed a little bit from their first games of the day yesterday. And we've already spoken about the theory crafting. Are you expecting yeah. that from Envy? Well, I, I think uh, Fnatic's going to do the same thing. Grab like a five position for Yamate, and he can do something that can push lanes and passively farm while the carry rotates to the jungle farm or be aggressive. I think NP um, will likely do something similar. I think it's more likely they play safe, but just adjust some of their core picks. That way their laning stage can be really good. Because that was definitely the lesson of yesterday. Make sure your lanes are good because uh, probably just because teams aren't reacting perfectly to all situations just yet. Sure, I mean, we saw a, a nice range of heroes picked yesterday. Some of the ones that we picked out earlier on in the day finally came out, the we Ember did. came out, yep. seen a few other picks. Is there anything in there that you think, oh, I really want to see this? I mean, I, I, the Ember. I mean, you know, this is something that Envy, he used to play very nicely in the, in the safe lane position. Absolutely, put him on the mid lane on the Ember Spirit. We could certainly uh, see a chance of that happening. 
we saw uh, obviously kind of the, the bearless build lone druid yesterday from wing it didn't work out yeah. hey, hey, but that's, that's a bear it it's was that, well, there was it a bear. Was bear it wasn't the lonely the naked druid. bear it, it, it was, was the naked it was bear. the naked bear not it was the, lonely, the naked bear. lonely druid no 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 but that i mean lone druid you know historically that's something that Owie's pretty amazing at yeah, so it yeah. could happen is he, really is, good. He, is he gonna play the lonely druid way though purge i the think it's cannon? better right now the uh yep. the the perfect counter was in the game um I actually can't remember what they had. Oh yeah, uh, Wraith, Wraith does yeah, uh, Wraith double Wraith. the crit versus uh, the bear. It's a very good counter against Lone Druid. We saw, uh, I think, uh, OG originally used it at like ES or Manila Major. This so. was what I was talking about So we about actually yesterday. saw them pick this up yesterday yeah. as well, right? Yeah, this is the same stuff from MP. They played MSS Darkseer and Rose on the Breaker yesterday, yeah. Oh, good, good space creation. It uh, covers that roaming thing. You can you can help with all lanes. You can even do easy stuff like cast Iron Shell on Spirit Breaker. He can TP somewhere else and then charge. And then technically it's like having one and a half heroes in a lane. Lots of extra damage for us. It either. definitely allows them to match the early game aggression from Fnatic because I think this game is going to revolve around Ohio and Febby trying to create space on the middle lane for In Your Dream. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think almost for sure NP would love to get Ember. Uh, Ember Darkseer, a very standard combo. Uh, we'll see if it gets banned out in the second phase. Some learning from the first day as well in there, the first ban Meepo. Absolutely. And also uh, relevant as well, I think the Naga ban. Yep. I think as these two are saying, these are teams they are going to want to fight. Yep. Naga, incredibly good at resetting the fights and also, again, one of our strong. So yeah. And the Mirana Naga was what we saw yesterday in combo as well, wasn't it? Yeah, so I guess just yeah, take yeah, we both did. out. Very good. Disruptor very good at shutting down Spirit Breaker Charge, just glimpse him back. Um, it's good on the lane against uh, Darkseer whenever he's alone as well. Yeah. So definitely a good pick up. I was worried that they pick up the Bounty Hunter, which I don't think is particularly strong against it the Spirit Breaker. Good, yeah, yeah, it would be yeah. suicide if they picked it against yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really, really nice as well synergy with the the Slardar with his corrosive haze. Of course, he can get that vision. It makes it even easier as he glimpses back opponents from a long range and, get, and trap them. It's a nice corrosive haze usage there. Yeah, uh, yeah, dropping the I correct name. Standing you know. here. Did you, did you they changed all the names. All of his didn't skills. They? I don't know why they did. Well, know, which I one mean, is Jacob damage? It's ulti, it used to be yeah. amplified. Oh, okay. ja Jacob's still using Priestess of the Moon and Pick yeah, I'm still in Dota. He's still in Dota One. Yeah, he hasn't actually moved on yet. Nothing Dude, wrong with that. People stick with their glory years, Paul. It's like you and the, <laughs> I don't know, 1800 or something. <laughs> when I was playing Unreal Tournament in black and white. Yeah. Sure. In real life. With swords. In real life. Life stealer ban. Um, yeah, very active. Very strong yesterday as well. I think Kevin brought up a good point. Banning out the Ember Spirit is... Oh, was it Owen? Banning no, out yeah. the Ember Spirit is definitely... Uh, should be a priority. Yeah, for should be a good second phase ban here, shouldn't it? Unless so they want it themselves. I mean, it's it's great anti-mobility as well. So against Sardar, it's one of the best solutions. Just Searing chains him and he's like, just screwed pretty much. We saw that, I, I think, when VP was playing Sardar, I believe. If, if you're not initiating with Sardar, you're going to have a bad time. Jug also used an awful lot yesterday. Yeah, it really was. Can't wait for that hero to get nerfed again. It's just too safe, like, no matter which way you lane him, he's good at fighting early, you hit six, you can start getting solo kills, you can jungle fast with Quilling Blades and hey man, Humble the Dominators. It doesn't work against Omni anymore. That's a nerf. Uh, what doesn't work against Omni? Oh, Diffusal? I, I don't think that really matters. Because you still oh, I, buy, you I, buy I, Diffusal I every game anyways. Sort of the point. <laughs> okay. So, ir irrelevant nerf. Okay. Irrelevant nerf. Yeah. Shadow nerf. Uh, it actually did get quite nerfed, though. You can't use it on yourself anymore. It's kind of big. For Jock, though, not as big. Yeah, absolutely not. He would have been good with the Iron Shell as well. So with the Timber ban, I think that's possibly telling here. Um, it doesn't really lane well against Darkseer Spearbreaker, so it's probably a ban against what NP want to draft. It might be lane focus. Like, there's a lot of heroes that do have laning problems against Timber Saw. Could be maybe like a strength through mage or something that they plan to run. That's a good point. You think they could go for Dragonite? I don't think they'll pick it this early. Uh, something, who was that team that did that yesterday? They grabbed Timbersaw mid, they got him seven, and they instantly shifted him to the offlane and bullied the carry. It was really cool. I don't remember which team it was. It's another laning advantage. Uh, CM, um, kind of a bad hero, but kind of good too, situationally. Free mana for Darkseer and Spearbreaker is really good. Once he gets 25, I just saw Wagamama, the uh, glorious... Slasher level analysts also saying that uh, Frostbite gets really good. It gets an extra one and a half seconds, so it goes up to four and a half with a six second. Then she gets an Octarine Core and you can keep them permanently. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and with the Axe as well, because yeah. of course with the Axe Ultimate, people get Frostbitten all yeah. around you. And then so. she gets a Divine yeah. Rapier and yeah. she would never be able to farm any of those items. And that idiots. plus 50 and damage. And know? then when you wake up, you know, it's like real life. Yeah. Ooh, I like this a lot. Bit of Cottle. 
It's good. Anti-mobility. Saw a lot of bands on him yesterday as well. Sort of unexpected though. I didn't think Fnatic would be a team to typically pick up a keeper of the life. I mean, it kind of covers what the Lina did as yesterday. The Amber. There we go. It covers what the Lina did because it can just push out lanes. I mean, we, we saw this coming a long way out, way before the draft even yeah. started. Yeah. And definitely once they got through the second phase. And yet, Fnatic haven't respected that as a band. Not sure what the Ventral Spirit Band is about. It's not a hero you typically... Well, unless it's they're going for... I don't know. It's a core NP thing. Like, yeah, if they I were running that last patch, I think yeah. they could easily do it again. Um, maybe a little unlikely, but... I'd say it's good against heroes like Disruptor and Sardar. Relatively good. Um, I, I think the Disruptor Sardar is good against Ember, definitely. They, they won't always be the perfect solution, but they can work. Um, so it's going to kind of come down to this, like, 10 to 25 minute period. Can Fnatic actually pressure Ember really well? They're also very magic damage focused right now on NP. A little all in actually on one damage type that could really hurt him. Assume, assuming Embo is going for the 7.0 build. I, I assume, yes. Yeah, surely, surely right. Right. Which, I mean, which you're was successful yesterday with Wii, so. Yeah, yeah. you've already got it. That. No, I, I completely agree. Just yeah. You got three other magic nukers on your team as well. Like, why not get a veil? Okay. Oh, well, another new hero that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, one of uh, so I imagine it'll be Mushi playing one of his strongest. Fnatic is actually doing the exact opposite of what I hoped they would. This is by no means an aggressive playstyle. This is just sitting back, farming up. It's almost playing into control. MP's hands, isn't it? Uh, I mean, he has had some amazing late game Ember Spirit games where he could carry his team on his own. Maybe there's some like abusive thing here with Medusa. Oh, was that a was that a cameraman throwback from the Reddit threads? Did you guys see the instant zoom in? <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's like an MLG thing. Um, <laughs> Medusa with <laughs> Keeper is kind of cool. You can increase your mana pool, Chakra Magic. Um, maybe Snakes are really effective. Uh, does Mana Shield works OK against ma Amped Magic damage, I guess, because the damage blocks before the magic amplification. But What about her talent tree? Anything interesting in this? It's all boring, pretty much. She gets like <laughs> plus Int, maybe some Agi here or there. Manta is better on her, and Mushi does love building Manta on Medusa, because now your illusions get attack speed bonuses. So maybe that's the joke. <laughs> I, wanted um, to, I wanted to have 18 snakes available at 25. It's possible. You could throw a lot of snakes, maybe. I, I mean, it's, it's basically anti-team fight in a lot of ways. Hello! The um, so this pick I like a lot, and it, it yeah. matches up pretty well against the Ember Spirit as well. Yeah, you need something to get rid of that flame guard. Yeah, if you do want something up against him, Queen of Pain is that one. What do you think about the Invoker ban? I mean, no one seems to be talking too much about Invoker at the moment. Pros Probably particularly. Is, is Again, I it, it's not good, right? I would have thought Queen of Pain would, would have been the better ban. Mm. Yeah, Invoker's basically just not touched. He doesn't even get two Forge Spirits until he's level 15 now. I wonder what they're going to be, because I guess we are still looking for Aoi's here if it is indeed going to be Envy on they the Ember Spirit. I mean, not Druid. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to go with Slark instead. I like that a lot, actually. Can drain stats from Medusa. Yeah. Pretty survival. Weak disables from Fnatic as a whole. It's a good pick. Not very good against the Queen of Pain, but still a, a the, very, very decent pick. They've got Frostbite. They've got they've got Ember Root. They've got Spirit Breaker Charge. They've got tons of disables for her. I thought they could have gone for a Tiny, p potentially. But but I, I, I think the Slag is overall better because of the Medusa. Yeah. Way better against Medusa. Yeah, yeah but the, the Tiny would have been great against the Queen of Pain. Yeah. OK. All right. Thank you, all three of you. We'll hear more from our expert panel, of course, at the end of our first game. But now let's head over to the commentary team for game one between NP and Fnatic. That's right, one time here at ESL 1. Genting, Blitz and I are going to be casting together Fnatic versus Team NP. Blitz, we were already having a discussion quite a bit about the draft. What are your thoughts about those final couple of pickups? I think the Slark pick was really good. Uh, he doesn't have a lot that he has to worry about too much. He can always shed things off. The Disruptor is kind of the key hero for me here because I feel like it's very easy for this Disruptor to just get wrecked in this game. It's one of those heroes where if you're ahead, you can continue to get ahead. All right, well, we're going to already start off with some early smoke rotations coming out from Fnatic as they try and get some aggressive ports in. We, we were talking about the, the Dusa, right? It felt like Dusa, I thought maybe it was a bit too slow of a hero for this patch, but NP didn't really have very strong high ground, but it seems like they did kind of rescue that with the Slark pickup, right? But now they have both Ember Spirit as well as Slark who can go late game against a Dusa, while Fnatic have this tempo-controlling mid of Queen of Pain who will probably drop off a little bit more than those other two, right? The problem, though, is it's still very scary for Slark to go high ground against the Disruptor and the Slardar. 
if he doesn't have he doesn't really have a save on his team, so it's very easy for NP to just get blown up trying to go for the high ground. For NP, the name of the game is you have to get as many kills as you possibly can. It's kind of reminiscent of the lineup that uh, Wings had against DC in game two of yesterday, where Wings had a really difficult time going high ground even with the Terra Blade because they had no lane push out, and so you just have to kill nonstop. And at some point they ran out of momentum, and I feel like that's going to be the name of the game. Can NP keep that momentum going? Can they just keep getting these pickoffs? And then they can roll to a win. I just kind of called it uh, brute force, I think it was. It was just kind of like, you have to fight. You just kind of like force these things. And if you can force these engagements, and then you can potentially take objectives. But you're always working on a timer. So you just kind of have to. Things, things aren't our ideal, right? But most of the time, you just kind of have to go for it anyway. Because you don't want to go late game against that Naga Siren. And in this case, you probably don't want to go late game against that Slark. Yeah. It's very annoying, though, for NP doesn't really have, I guess they have a Slark for a BKB hero. Yeah. They needed something with a uh, BKB. Because right now, Disruptor's so valuable. Yeah. But I could really see Disruptor being useless in this game. It's one of those heroes where if you're initiating and you're Slardar, uh, it's like a symbiotic relationship. If your Slardar has a good start, he can open things up for you, and then you get a really good opportunity to get your ultimates off. Right. Then this hero is sick. Then you just chase everybody down with you in the Sardar. But if you get behind, Yamate could just easily feel pretty useless in this game. Yeah, he's not a very good hero. At, uh, at, he, he feels very suffocated, and he can't actually respond very well, right? He's not a very strong reactionary hero. If we have a Spirit Breaker, Ember Spirit, or a Slark, there's three different heroes that can actually close the distance pretty quickly and actually get in somebody's face. Disruptor really doesn't have appropriate responses to that besides maybe a Glimpse sent back, and that's not uh, a whole lot to cheer about. Yeah, and right now at bottom, it is going to be a dual lane. I do like that they're doing this. I feel like, especially against the Radiant safe lane, you should try to punish this as much as possible. So what we should see here is the Coddle is going to use his blast quite early on to shove in the lane. Then they're going to use this area to pull in to the creep camp and just deny that farm. Is it because of that pull that you feel like the, the Radiant safe lane is a lane that you want to pressure a bit more? Uh, it just feels like the way that the lane is structured as well. Like, I feel like the Dire, if you go for a tri lane, it's pretty easy to protect. Yeah. Even these dual lanes. That's why I think that In Your Dream is playing the Queen of Pain, because there's not a lot of heroes that can just straight up survive. You're not going to pick a melee core and put him, uh, put him up here just because you're going to have a dual lane. Right. That's why we see the advent of heroes like Gyrocopter coming back in. Just because they're such strong laners and that they're able to transition into that fighting core that you really need in this kind of patch. Yeah, precisely. And you don't really have to worry about them because no off laner is really going to mess with Rocket Barrage. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Mushi as the Medusa here facing up against Eternal Envy. That's going to be pretty value, right? You've got uh, this Mystic Snake facing up against a melee hero, and you are a, a pretty tanky hero that is going to be able to. He's not a necessarily like a juggernaut who could just shrug things off with uh, a free spin, but it is one of the harder heroes to gank in the mid lane, right? Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty dead lane. Neither hero is going to really pressure too hard. They should just be able to trade farm pretty easily. If anything, Mushi has some potential to die, but a Medusa is very rarely going to get a solo kill on anybody. Right. I think what they'd like to do is at some point you're going to uh, Ion Shell Rose, and he's just going to try to gap close onto this Medusa, and they might try an attempt when NV gets a few levels. SVG is going to be closed on here. Looks like Ohio does manage to hit the crush. They follow up and will easily bring him down. First blood going to Fnatic. Febby will pick that one up already. The aggressive dual lane of Fnatic's paying off big dividends. Yeah, see, I'm just not a hero that can contest very early in this lane. And like we talked about, this is going to be a very strong lane for Fnatic. They've invested a lot into this with the Coddle and the Sardar down here. And you notice Febby immediately pushes the lane, and he's going to try to drag this creep wave in. And that's what SVG has to try to stop. I mean, that's supposed to be the big advantage of uh, CM, right, is being able to uh, utilize. Oh, oh they Ohio. do manage to catch Ohio, and Keeper of the Light still not coming back. Go Ohio's going to have to sprint himself away. Oh, Unable yeah. to hit the crush there. SVG stops it mid-animation. And they will manage to finish him up, evening up the score. Yeah, now up at top, MSS does have that Iron Talon up, was splitting XP with Rose. And Disruptor, not the best hero to try to contest this lane. Yeah, Queen of Pain. Maybe when they get level 5, level 6 on the quap, maybe they can actually burst through these tanky heroes. But until then, Disruptor feels a bit of lackluster when it comes to this laning phase. Both, both these uh, supports, right, they have the same weakness, Disruptor and CM. Very easily to uh, easy to contest. Yeah, you notice the mid. They waited for. This is exactly what uh, I was saying. They waited for the level four. They iron shell up the spear breaker, and this should be enough for them to get the kill. Easily enough. Mushi ends up going down, and Eternal Envy is going to take a big lead now in this lane. 
thanks in part to Rose. So you called the rotation perfectly. MSS, he backs himself up out of the lane. You know, doesn't really feel necessary to be out there since he has the Iron Talon anyway. So the NP still managed to maintain a very efficient uh, off lane while their four position is ganking mid. I would really, I would have really liked it if they had gotten some vision on the north side because you know that if you pick a Spirit Breaker and a Darkseer together, they are going to aggro dual lane. This is yeah. reminiscent of you remember when NIP used to pick at first two every single game of those qualifiers. It's such a strong lane to mess with, just because you can rotate so easily to that mid lane. Right. AUI, going to try and contest these neutrals here, pick up as much as he can, but Febby's Keeper of the Light is being a constant nuisance now with the level 2 blast. Quickly disables the south, but he is going to be caught here. SVD does manage to get him with the Frostbite. Nice crush, but it's still not enough, as the Slark still have that death back going. And with the help of Ion Shell, they're going to be able to get that kill. Mushi. Is he going to be fine here? Should be fine, right? Eternal Envy, not going to be able to dive that tower. Mana Shield is just a bit too much for him to handle. Still, though, he is keeping the pressure on Mushi as he's already feeling a bit scared after that gank from the Spirit Breaker earlier. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about that NP has to do. They just have to keep killing. Mm -hmm. At some point, your cores uh, are going to not be able to really go high ground, so you need as big of an advantage as possible so you control the map and you can just bludgeon them with your gold lead. And right now, you're seeing that happen. The combination of the Darkseer and the Spirit Breaker, this is exactly what they needed. And NP, this isn't enough. They need to continue the momentum going forward. And that, that's at some point, right, when Fnatic's safe lane, Queen of Pain, will come into play, right? The NP is going to be trying to force these kills so often, but Queen of Pain can be that hero to rotate to kind of uh, counter those, yeah. those aggressive moves by NP. That was always the strength of heroes like Puck and Queen of Pain, is that they have that instant turnaround ability with their ultimates. Mm -hmm. When you jump into a lane, the Queen of Pain just TPs down, drops her ulti, it's almost always a kill as at bottom AUI. Gonna get harassed up, but he should be just fine. SVG has to play this weird kind of role where he wants to be able to give that solo experience to Slark, right? Because it's so necessary for you to be able to get that level 6 early, but he still has to kind of remain close enough to the lane that he can help out AUI when necessary seems like this Slark is suffering uh, a bit in CS because of all this pressure and currently sitting at 23 and 9. Yeah, doing better than I thought he would though overall as the Queen of Pain up at top is more or less getting free farm. Hasn't really been contested too hard. This is more a lane that's just annoying as she's going to get charged up. No longer has the blink. If he actually gets the bash or maybe just the damage over time is going to be enough and NP very easily killed. That solo hero, he was getting all the free farm in the world. You were just talking about it, but NP a big win there as they managed to cut that hero down to size a bit. I mean, the problem there was she was taking some damage from the Ion Shell, so she got a little bit greedy, didn't think that this Rose was going to be up here. And, and so far, the Spirit Breaker has Dyer's paid off in spades for them, as this top tower is now being contested. And this is the issue with uh, when you contest a lane this hard, the Queen of Pain has to go back up there to shove out the wave, and that'll allow NP to know that she's not going to make that rotation into the Radiant safe lane. Yeah, I love this. TP down is going to be able to get this charge in. Ohio, the target here, a good blast comes through, but it's not going to be nearly enough for a Turn around as AUI just backs himself away. Again, the Disruptor, not a strong enough support, but maybe he can actually bring a hero into position. Nice blast with a Mystic Stake, and they will manage to get Rose. But still, it costs them their Slardar. And that hero, you said, his timing is so important, right? His Blink Dagger is going to allow the Disruptor to be that much stronger of a hero. And if he gets set behind, it's going to be bad news for Fnatic. So that trade-off is probably worth it for NP. Yeah, the problem is you have one of your cores that just isn't really a tempo setter in Mushi and he has to be the one to rotate down just because the Queen of Pain has to deal with that top lane. Yeah. That's the strength of the Dark Seers, that he's always going to shove in that lane. And now you're in a position where it's Mushi that's making I the rotations. He just wants to sit in his lane, create a dead lane, farm as much as he can in this mid area. Well, Queen of Pain going to be gone on here once again. Rose not getting the bash. That's necessary. But he will have the level 6 soon. At, at this point, it seems like the, the Queen of Pain, it, early on, it was fine for him to be the safe laner. But do you think that Fnatic should switch things up, push Mushi in that top lane? That way you have your tempo controller a little bit more free to move around the map while the Dusa can deal with the constant pressure of the Darkseer lane? I think there's some merit in making her go bottom and allowing the Slardar to even pick up his farm at top. But okay, yeah. then again, it's going to be a Slardar against a Darkseer, and you don't really want the melee heroes up there. Is Rose just going to yeah. fake the the charge and this is a very strong spirit breaker right now <laughs> yeah i mean he's had such a successful lane that before the eight minute mark he is level six so he's going to be such a threatening powerhouse he could even potentially gank mid with an ion shell just with the extra power of his ultimate in your dream he's going to run into rose here inside the jungle it's going to be awkward. It's going to be hit by the charge. He still has the blink up, but they're going to try and chain stun him down here. Oh, the back. back with the vacuum. MSS, a clutch pick up there at level 7. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they are going to start going on AUI. He does have his ultimate, though, and will be able to get out of glimpse range, it looks like, as Yamate 
trying to hunt for it, but it's just not going to be. It's going to be a heavy rotation by both teams. Yeah, Ohio's going to be caught here. The charge does manage to land out. They send Rose back just in time. The Iron Shell's not quite enough there. Now SVG is going to be the one caught. Nice kinetic field there from Yamate. Ensures an extra kill for Fnatic. Six to three now as Fnatic just bring extra heroes to the bottom lane and Disruptor's Glimpse makes the extra difference. Still a very smart rotation by AUI. They're going to try to punish this mid tower and this is definitely not worth it for Fnatic. They want to rotate back into that mid lane. It's not worth it for them to give up this tower. Hence why you're seeing the Queen of Pain move in. But this is heavy damage on this mid tower and you still traded a CM for a Slardar. Or for the Slardar to go back. He has pretty much no farm. Tranquil Boots at 9 minutes. Queen of Pain going to be caught here. Managed to get the blink back, no charge onto him. SVG was cutting across, but he's actually going to run into Ohio. Ohio looking to chase him down, but he doesn't really have that much support. In fact, it's going to be Eternal Envy cutting through the Shrine here. Ohio is going to play around, misses the crush. What a play from Eternal Envy, but there is the Shrine turn around. The Queen of Pain is going to be able to jump forward. The charge is coming through. They can't quite finish off SVG. A big blast holding onto it. Ohio hits the stun and barely walks outside range. Now the ultimate goes off, and Rose may just use that as an escape until Glimpse pulls him right back in. But still, he got the kill he was looking for. Once again, the Slardar is going to be kept away from that precious blink dagger and NP making bit of trade-offs here. Yeah, that was a sick trade by both teams as they all made the rotation in. That Shrine placement though, this is the biggest difference in Dota is you have to be careful at where you fight in just because nobody was really uh, willing to go down in that area for the Dire side. As Slardar does go down and we were talking about how bad of a game he's been having so far. Even yeah, less levels than this Disruptor. That dual lane was supposed to provide a lot for Ohio, but unfortunately, he's now going to have to like take some farm from In Your Dream as he's kind of weakened up these neutrals for Ohio to be able to take. Need to be able to create space for him, but they don't really have much space creators, right? You don't have two supports that are super active and make things happen. They're a little bit more reactionary heroes, and then it's just all on In Your Dream as this Queen of Pain to make stuff happen, but he's already had a bit of a rough laning phase due to the pressure of the Spirit Breaker Darkseer combo. Yeah, they're going to make their way down at bottom. SVG doesn't really have a lot of help here in this nice south side. through the trees until Ohio runs past Radiant SVG. Looks like they should still easily get this kill. SVG would have to do some crazy juke of his life, and that's not going to happen. So 7-5 to five now as Fnatic pick up another kill. But again, it does force them to bring three heroes to one lane, and NP are maintaining much better farm efficiency around the map with Chorus all over these other lanes and even jungle. Once you see these uh, first two major pickups and items are NP, I think that's when they're going to start ramping up the aggression. You're going to see the Shadow Blade onto the Slark, start fights, scout things out. It's hard for Fnatic to play that entire map out, just because if the Slark immediately just jumps on the Keeper of the Light or the Disruptor, that's going to be a kill every time. Oh, this is going to be a combination. They have the Spirit Breaker and the Centaur picked up by the Helmet Dominator of MSS. Misses the stun, though, and Mushi just proves to be too tanky. Besides, the rest of Fnatic is swarming in from behind. They're looking to be able to catch somebody. Febby does not have a level in Mana leak, so he can't actually do much to catch these very mobile heroes. Just scaring them away, it seems, as Yamate unable to get the glimpse that they really wanted. Yeah, and that was not great for Fnatic. They rotated five heroes up there with the smoke, and they weren't able to get anybody as NP. They can just wait, see if any stragglers are behind. Do you agree with Febby's choice? I mean, you've got both the Darkseer and the Spirit Breaker, who are very mobile heroes who want to be able to use their, their running around movement to be able to do a lot. It seems like Mana Leak would help lock down those heroes. You still want to farm, though. The Keeper of the Light Axe is going to be quite huge against the Sark. Yeah, okay. There is some merit in picking up at least one level of it, but at the same time, I think he's just focusing on uh, going later into the game. I mean, look at how much farm he has. He already has 1,700 gold and that point booster as a result of this build. Yeah, he is actually the uh, the one here that's looking pretty decent on net worth. Uh, I guess in your dream, in comparison to the Ember Spirit, is not too bad, and Medusa is still getting a decent amount as well. Mushi currently sitting on face boots and an Ogre Club. In this kind of patch, uh, how does the Medusa build? Come I think going for Dragonlance mm -hmm. is still pretty favorable. Do you like uh, maybe Mjolnir after that for some early damage and extra pushing power? Uh, the only thing I kind of don't want to see this game is... Let me think. I think Manta's still okay. You Not can't go both Manta and Lincoln slow in a game like this. Yeah. You only pick up one defensive item. Yeah, I would do it. As Eternal Envy up at top, they do have the Disruptor level 6, but seems a little bit hesitant to use it. Eternal Levy's already been pretty tricky with this Ember Spirit. Yamate does not want to blow that big ult and miss out. Yeah. That kind of ultimate being on cooldown would just allow NP to be so much more aggressive because it's one of the few big teamfight abilities that Fnatic have uh, to rely on. The other one being 
Kuita Pain's Arsenal both Scream the Pain and Sonic Wave. Yeah. For Fnatic right now, their huge bright spot is that their cores are keeping up relatively well, aside from the starter, of course, but the Keeper of the Light pretty much is a core at this point. 3,600 net worth on him. Yeah. Not even that far behind Envy, as he's already got... He's going to have three of the four components of his Aghanim Scepter just 13 minutes into the game. Man, that's pretty crazy. The downside, though, is we talked about how Disruptor, I felt like he could easily have a rough game. He's got a wand, not really picking up too many levels. Hasn't been able to drop that ultimate like we'd like uh, for him to do as NP. We said they were going to wait for this huge pickup. The Shadow Blade is online for AUI, and this mid tower is going to be where they want to go for. Heavy invasion, but it is going to be scattered out by Fnatic. A successful scan is out. I think they know that NP's trying to make a move for this mid lane is Rose going to wrap around. His smoke's going to break. He knows they're on the south side. He's holding for now while the rest of his heroes are going to try and back him up. They still have this Shadow Blade in. Might have seen him. And so they do manage to get the charge outside the kinetic field. Rose is going to be brought back, it looks like, by a glimpse. But AUI is going to start coming forward, maybe trying to help out Rose, or maybe they're just going to give him up. AUI comes forward now. They're going to go straight for Yamate, but does manage to get off his ultimate. But it may not be enough. It looks like the Queen of Pain gets off the ult, but it's just not enough. Mushi, he pops his ultimate, trying to survive through all this. But Envy is big, and he's going in time. Oh, he's going to be able to hit both. CM multi does something, AUI but it's not enough. AUI managed to get out, and MP very clearly wiped Fnatic easily with their cores staying very healthy. That was so well done for them as Rose took up so much of that damage up, and the Disruptor just couldn't land his clean ultimate off with the ring as well, and MP just ran them over, and this is exactly what we were talking about, what they had to do. You have to get into these skirmishes, because it's not easy for you to just straight up siege towers. Yeah, it seemed like they, they were just like, all right, Rose is going to get sent back. They're going to blow so much on him, and this is going to be a prime opportunity for both AUI and Eternal Envy to be able to jump in. And it wasn't even close. Both those heroes were very healthy and were very easily able to go for more if there was anything left from Fnatic. Yeah, and so far, all three cores don't have a death to their name. These two supports have tanked up so much of the attention on the side of Fnatic. And they still maintain a decent amount of net worth sitting at both around that 2,500 area. Yeah, five deaths on SVG, but he doesn't really care. He's a 2,300 net worth Crystal Maiden. All of his deaths don't really mean too much. The Spirit Breaker has done more than his fair share in a game like this. Yeah, absolutely. As I think they should go for aggression again. You have to get kills before you can push towers. That's the name of the game right now for NP. Going for Roshan also isn't really an option. They don't have that hero with negative armor. Not a lot of physical damage on a core like Ember is. You're going to see them smoke up here. And this is exactly the kind of move that you want to make. Invading the enemy jungle or even going straight up into the old area where Roshan used to be. Invading their kind of offlane jungle area. And then from there, what? They try and take the tier 1 bottom. Yes. As that's exactly what they're going to go for. They're going to run into this Queen of Pain. That's perfect. Going to be able to lock him down with a Frostbite. Follow up with Spirit Breaker. That combination is easily a kill. It and AUI is actually searching for more. Nice vacuum back into the Centaur stun. What a beauty. AUI pops his ultimate. Does manage to get out the Dark Pack. Hopefully he's going to be able to catch one more. Yamate is going to be latched on by the Pounce. Rose will easily claim that kill instead. Three heroes down from Fnatic. And P very clearly getting the objective they wanted out of that smoke. Will turn it into a tier 1 tower as well. That was so well done by AUI. He notices that his team is already going to mop up, so he continues to look for more. As a result, they pick up three kills total. And we're seeing the weakness of a hero like Disruptor in a game like this, where he has to play passively, his Keeper of the Light's farming, and so you're just not uh, using this catch hero very well because your Slaughter just doesn't have the prerequisite amount of farm. It's 17 minutes in, still doesn't have that Blink Dagger. And right now, as a result, NP just rolling. And Fnatic just can't make moves if the Slardar doesn't have a Blink Dagger. They're never going to get a clean Disruptor ultimate off. Fast rotation is going to catch Ohio. Very beautifully done by NP. The quick rotation by Eternal Envy up there to that Tier 1 tower stops Ohio from being able to TP out. And again, they'll keep that Blink Dagger at bay. He was actually getting somewhat close to it. And, and you keep on this, like this combination, Disruptor's just not allowed to be the hero that he really wants to be without this strong initiator from Fnatic. Yeah, and right now, he, honestly, Yamato must hate this game right now. Because yeah. There's not a lot of moves for him to make. If you notice, his team is just getting picked off across the map, and they're just farming. There's not a whole lot that they can do without farm. So you've got two or three heroes farming one lane, another farming the jungle, and so it's easy for the Slark to set up, for the Spear Breaker to just run in, because he knows that he's not really going to go contested. The charge from Rose will force a TP. Is he going to be able to get out, though? Yamate. Looking for the glimpse. He does find the angle. Glimpse. 
And that will be a very easy one-off pickoff. Maybe Eternal Envy wants to go back in, though. He's actually going to try and challenge them a bit, tries to help out Rose. Rose is actually getting away with the help of the Surge. In your dream, is going to be able to clean him up, but he blinked into AUI. That's going to be a nasty one. He turns around, throws out the ult, knows that he's dead, just tries to get the damage done. And Fnatic will try and hold behind their Tier 2 tower. Looks like NP were a bit too low after that this Sonic Wave to try and pursue for more. And again and again, and NP trading a support just so one of the cores on the side of Fnatic goes down. I mean, this is some next level Titanic stuff where they're just sacrificing themselves. <laughs> the cores still don't have a single death. None of the cores on the side of NP. Well, they're getting close to at least one big upgrade for Fnatic. That Aghanim Scepter is coming up. Mushi is slowly but surely building up damage, but it's still going to be a while before it, it becomes like a true core, right? It's it's still just right now, he's in his farming time. He needs probably a good, Radiant's what, 15 minutes before he actually becomes a threat in team fights. Yes. And the bigger thing, I guess the good news for Fnatic is that once they pick up the Blink Dagger and Slaughter, they can start making moves. And with how far ahead NP is, if you kill any other cores, you can slow down a lot of the momentum. We already talked about the difficulty that NP has in going for the high ground. You notice at bottom, all they could really take was a tier one as a result Dyer's of those kills. They're never going to be able to transition just a straight up push. You have to get a kill or two minimum and then go for the push right. thereafter. And so even with this lead, you can still play behind this Medusa. But for the rest of Fnatic's cores, they have to get moving. You need the Slardar Blink Dagger more than anything before you make a smoke play. Like this, Yamata has had the smoke for quite a while, hasn't really been able to use it. They're going to use it before the Blink Dagger comes onto the Slardar. Might be a mistake. Yeah, we'll see. It looks like they're going to push through their own jungle, try and clear that one out. They do have this uh, aggressive ward that I think maybe spotted the Spirit Breaker. This but is just more time that Ohio's not really farming out. Yeah. Is under attack. Similar rotation coming out from NP as they're actually backing up uh, Eternal Envy in this bottom lane. Maybe they thought the Blink Dagger was already up on the Slardar and that smoke rotation was coming for Jackie at bottom, but... I think they wanted to clear out their jungle for the Medusa, but at the same time, Ohio, 20 minutes in, this Blink Dagger pickup is going to be huge for them. They can still kill anybody in the game with this combo, the Slardar uh, into the Disruptor Static Storm. Yeah, we don't have a BKB yet for AUI and the Ember Spirit is naturally squishy, so... High net worth heroes, potential for a big comeback here if Fnatic can actually make the execution on their initiations. I still think it's relatively simple for Fnatic to get back into this game. They just need one or two pickups onto the cores. But NP has done a very good job of making their cores scarce and just sending in Rose to scout everything out. At the, at the same time, right, the Slardar's Crush, it does have enough of an animation that NP should always be able to counterplay with those two cores, right? They have the Slark who can go ahead and Shadow Dance very early on, and then you'll, you have, more importantly, the Amber Spirit who can jump away before the crush hits, so. He does have the Blade Mail now alongside that Veil of Discord, so this is your big mid-game Ember Spirit. He's getting into one of his big peaks where he is a powerhouse damage dealer. Yeah, and this is where I'd really like to see them use the smoke, is they've got this Blink Dagger, they don't want to quite reveal it yet. Yeah. And Mushi, Getting close to that Manta style. That's exactly what we were talking about. It's either the Lincolns or the Manta, but there's a lot more use for the Mantas. NP, they realize they have to get aggressive if they're going to transition anything into a push. And AUI going to be sent forward as in your dream blinks forward. Yeah, unfortunate. Using that blink like that, he's easily going to be caught. Eternal Lady quickly more. shifts or two. Going to be able to find Yamate. They search for more after that. Fnatic looks like they have gotten themselves away. Once again, just not able to be the initiators. They are going to be able to catch Bevy. Nice snag there from Eternal Envy. A mega kill streak already for AUI. He just picked up the Echo Saber, and he is now not too far away from that BKB that is just going to stop every bit of aggression from this Fnatic. Is, yeah, this is exactly what we wanted to see. NP immediately going to transition this into a push. And Fnatic, again, just kind of getting caught, split up around the map. They seem way too content to just farm. I think they have the idea that maybe this Dusa can just hold the high ground. NP doesn't have the best way to go high ground. But at the same time, you're not going to get a lot of value out of your supports anymore. Is Eternal Envy, this isn't really a problem for him at all. AUI is also in the jungle. He's going to be able to catch Mushi. Mushi does manage to get off his ult just before he ran out of mana. But uh, no, they're not actually going to pursue. In Your Dream was coming back up anyway, so a bit too dangerous to try and go out there. And SVG just solo taking this tower, going to get denied. Oh, as Mushi going to TP bottom to try to shove out this wave. 
and you really want to see Fnatic make a move as five. Yeah, I mean, because that, that window is closing, right? We're soon going to come into a game that it's the Queen of Pain and the, the Slardar and even the Disruptors to a certain extent, they're just not really going to be that effective anymore, and it's just going to be all pressure on Mushi to perform. AUI going to get spotted out here. Bevy is going to be the first target here. AUI is going to pop his ultimate but rather early on. Bevy tries to protect himself, but will get taken out by the slow burn of the Ember Spirit. Yeah. NP just pick up that one kill and will back themselves away. I mean, they're definitely just waiting for daytime before they make any sort of move but even then it just feels so slow. A minute left to go till daytime, and that's when I'd imagine Fnatic is going to start making uh, their rotations around the map. They just don't feel comfortable making those aggressive maneuvers against the Slark's nighttime vision. It just isn't easy, and if you have a Keeper of the Light with Ags, why not abuse that? But yeah. at the same time, it just feels like they're waiting and waiting and waiting. First and they had to wait for the Blink Dagger on the Sardar, now they have to wait for the daytime to utilize uh, the Keeper of the Light Ags. Yeah, we already said their their timing was rather limited. And waiting that extra four minutes just going to cost them here an Aegis on Eternal Envy. So if it wasn't nighttime, now they're going to have to fight into an Aegis in daytime. And Mushi, a lot of heroes sitting behind him is in your dream on the south side of the map. It I is mean, daytime now. What, is a, what does a Queen of Pain do at this point in time, right? You, you can't... Like, it feels like the Orchid's not really going to be acceptable just because AUI is far enough ahead that... BKB is actually coming in for him already. Ember Spirit. He's going for the Lincolns. He's going for the Lincolns, so he will have a response yeah. to, to that Orchid. So is that item really the, the choice still for the Queen of Pain? Uh, I think it's okay, but there's it's he's kind of in a position where there's not a lot of items to get. Yeah. And right now, we see Fnatic all gathered up on this north side of the map, looking like they might try to go for a smoke, but instead just going to make their way towards the mid lane. <laughs> I mean, if you're grouped up like that and you're not actually smoking, that says very bad things about the way you feel this game is going. I mean, they're, they're so scared of NP's pick off from their cores. It's pretty much a Mushi has to 1v5 do damage in this game, and he's got a great hero for it. It's just the rest of the heroes on his team don't really have a game as a result. You'd really like to see them smoke, make some kind of move after this uh, clearing of creeps as NP smoked up themselves. They know they're looking for the engagement. Maybe in your dream is going to be the target here. AEY. He gets the pounce or they get the Ember Spirit Lash, but neither one's going to be able to go there. Cancel the charge and Fnatic will stay heavily gripped up. But that's the thing, right? It's like NP, they don't necessarily need to try and be aggressive. They're not even a team that is known for a whole lot of aggression. They are a little bit more farm oriented. So Fnatic are playing this sort of sit five man and you know sit behind the medusa and wait for some sort of initiation but npr more than willing just to take all the free space in the world and continue to farm up on their course yeah in the middle you see the medusa still has the highest net worth she's primarily being used to push out the wave so no surprise there the next three heroes all np heroes by significant margin the spear breaker really close to the slardar in the net worth and the Crystal Maiden has a Blink Dagger and 1100 gold. Do you think Adusa can actually beat both a Slark and an Ember Spirit if we go late game? It's hard, but anything's possible because you have that instant jump of the Slardar. Yeah. This is the one advantage that their lineup has is that it's hard for NP to get that instant jump off. Mm -hmm. You're pretty much just waiting for AUI to get some kind of initiation. And on top of that, the Spear Breaker, you're going to see him coming. Yeah. We, we also said that NP didn't really have the best high ground pushers in the world. They instead went for just more late game with their last pick. Uh, and that means pushing high ground, already a problem. You're also pushing into a Medusa, which probably has a lot more value as a high ground defender uh, because of those shrines. Extra value. Yeah, and at the bottom. Oh, nice stun there. They might just be able to finish off this Aegis of Eternal Envy, but it is just an Aegis, and he does manage to catch Mushi in place long enough for the rest of NP to make their rotation. Now oh, the vacuum promotion. Nice vacuum into the wall, but the ultimate's already going out for the Medusa, hoping to be able to slow down these heroes. AUI just continuing to focus him down, though, with the BKB. will bring down the big area of Fnatic, while the rest get cleaned up by Eternal Envy. He's picked up two, going for a third, and your dream does manage to blink himself away just in time, but he's trying to stay outside of vision to make sure he doesn't get caught. It is going to be blinked on. They need a charge, and there it is in your dream. He's going to have a hard time escaping from this one. Kills the creep that they were trying to boot to travel onto. Oh, they want and this. will get to the shrine, but the charge is still going to come through. Hits that one, pops the Necronomicon, <laughs> hoping to burn through his mana, and they are going to be able to latch him down long enough for the kill. AUI picks up a wicked six streak, 25 to 8, as NP will take one of the last remaining tier twos. And Fnatic, they heavily overrated how tanky their Deusa was going to be. 
She wasn't able to really deal damage in the back lines to scare anybody from NP. They went so aggressively forward behind that beautiful ba uh, back wall by MSS, and they're going to transition this into a push. And to try to solve some of their issues of going high ground, you see that Rose has committed to this Necrobook build. Yeah. Very interesting, particularly powerful against uh, the Queen of Pain and the Medusa. He's got the lockdown, and he's going to be able to get so much mana burn. You've also got that little bit of attack speed aura. That's helpful. Yeah, and a pipe going to be picked up by MSS. They're very heavily committing to the high ground as up at top. Mushi going to get caught up. He's in no man's land. Nobody really near him. His TPs are going to start flying out, but he's out of mana. BKB going to be activated, and Mushi's just on four. They've already canceled their TPs. They know NP's going to take that tier two. Ember Spirit is actually looking for some heroes in mid. Almost caught Yamate, but he's actually he's still searching so for him. He's going deep in. He does manage to pop the shrine, though, and Yamate will survive because of that shrine usage. But NP have now taken out all the tier two towers, and uh, let's see if they're going to threaten high ground wall. Mushi is still down for 45 seconds. Good news is that you still have a Keeper of the Light that can just send you back. And NP gonna realize that this isn't really gonna happen. No Aegis on any of their cores anymore. So back to shrine killing and map control, it seems. Yes, as they're gonna take out this North Shrine, get control of the jungle. That's very heavily placed. Uh, Ward says at bottom, Fnatic gonna rotate down. Maybe gonna try to set up on Envy, but Envy should just get out after this wave. Let's see if he's gonna be greedy. Oh, he actually blinks forward to uh, the Yamata might have the angle here. They're going to be able to catch him here if he gets the instant static shot. Oh! Half a second too late from Yamate. Doesn't manage to lock down the Ember Spirit. And Envy gets away scot-free. That is absurd reaction time by Envy. He's well known for his Ember, especially yes. at the Shanghai Major and the Frankfurt Major. Yeah, that, uh, that incredible game between EG and Secret back at the Frankfurt Major. Yamate is going to be caught here, sends back Eternal Envy. He doesn't care, so Light of Fizz actually dodges that attempt. Either way, he would have died to MSS. This is just the life of a Disruptor in a game where you're waiting for your team to farm. It doesn't really have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. So do we just go, he's going to go into Lincolns here, but after that, we go for the full Octarine and we just go for the permanent you know, I searing chains you forever sort of situation. Uh, it looks like he's still trying to go for the Lincoln Sphere. Yeah. I think going for more damage, though, has a lot of merit here. The, uh, the build that you see oftentimes in pubs is going for the Veil into the Radiance, mm -hmm. which is what we saw Weeha do yesterday. Yeah. Fan of that. As top, Bebby is the hero that you definitely want to kill. He's the one holding the pushes back. With the Macronomicon, it should be easy, but they do manage to stop that ultimate. Rose is going to be held in place for quite some time. Does manage to still hit Febby with the Necronomicons on top. They will be able to get that kill. Rose is backing himself away. That Amplify damage is just enough for Mushi to be able to get that one kill. And AUI actually got locked in by the Mushi ultimate. But they've been grouped up in the vacuum wall combination, and that allows the Amber Spirit to do big, big damage. They're going to try and chase Mushi in. Diving for the Shrine does manage to get that one up. The Shrine has value here, but it's just not enough. The damage is too big from NP. SVG lets it go. Now the buybacks start coming out from Fnatic as they desire to hold that tier 3 tower for, for now, but it's going to be coming at a big cost of their net worth. Yeah, right now, only three heroes alive. The Queen of Pain just does not have any semblance of farm that's going to scare NP at this point. Is They're going to continue to play aggressively here as the oh, vacuum wins. Vacuum, almost catching in your dream. But he does manage to back himself away just in time. In that last engagement as well, Ohio... Went for the stun before the blink, and if he had been able to get it off, maybe they could have killed the Slark, as he was quite low, but as a result, EY just able to pop the BKB, turn that around with the help of Envy. Yeah. Man, this Dark Seer is going to be so big. He's actually, uh, he's not going to complete out the, the pipe. He just gets the Hood of Defiance and then is going to go for the Plate Nail, assuming Shiva's yes. with his blink. Going to be incredibly tanky here for them. And we already have a, a Basher being built up by AY looking for that full Abyssal Blade. And right now, they're going to go for the smoke. And this might be one of the last attempts in the game for Fnatic to get back into it. As they've just lost too much. Without any buybacks available too. This is quite the aggressive maneuver for them. And I like it. They're playing to win. Rather than just waiting inside their base. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so many times, SVG, he's played the sacrificial lamb in this game, and he will be the one to take that smoke. That is not the kill that Fnatic were looking for. They were looking for a big engagement, at least a core pickoff, but SVG is the one to slide in front of that smoke instead. Yeah. And there is a Lincolns now available for Envy. You've got a pipe completed onto MSS, who does decide to finish it up. I mean, their team is just going to be so tanky right now. 
Yeah, and there's just, it seems like Mushi does not have nearly enough damage. Even if he completes the butterfly, we still need another big ticket item for him to actually threaten these heroes with such a high amount of armor and mobility. He's been at that Eagle Song for quite some time, Is does have the buyback available. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And right now, Fnatic, they've got a smoke. Looks like they want to go for it again. They are grouped up here, and Bushi doesn't get into it, but... They're, they probably don't want him, right? He's going to show somewhere on the map, and they can bring him in with the Coddle. Yeah. I mean, they're still making the moves that they should. You have to show somebody on the map. If nobody's pushing out lanes, then NP is just going to group up his five and play very defensively. But if you show Mushi at bottom, then maybe it forces them to split up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe NP assume, like, oh, they're probably just sitting four behind the Medusa, so... Yes, but NP only sending out SVG. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Crystal Maiden's going to tank the gank once again. They bring in the Medusa, but she blinks back. Still going to be hit by Ohio. The charge in, nice hit. What a bowling ball there Come from Rose. Does manage to knock out these heroes. And ultimate comes out for the Queen of Pain, but it just doesn't seem to be enough. And ultimate from Mushi buys him time, but there's just none of these heroes from NP that are low enough. They've killed Crystal Maiden, but NP are cleaning up all of the help of Mushi. They're going to try and charge in once again. Now the Crush comes out on a two. But again, NP, they just seem so tanky. They don't care about Mushi's damage. They're just going to be able to wipe out all the supporting crew behind Mushi and leave him for last. NP, wipe out Fnatic there and we'll get the last couple of desserts there. Febby, he'll go down as well. That'll be a gem dropped as well. Fnatic have no semblance of map control, no net worth to fall back on, no real progression in items. It just looks gloomier and gloomier for the C team. Yeah, and AUI, gonna pause the game, but at the same time, buyback, who's it available right now? There Beyond is the uh, a buyback on just uh, just the Dusa. It's going to be rough. The, the Slark has a double damage to pick up as well. He's got a decent number of Essence Shifts, so they can actually go for Roshan if they really wanted to. More likely, though, right, they're going to go down mid and force the buyback and then back up for Roshan. Yeah. And Fnatic, I mean, they made that aggressive move, but they're just so far behind in net worth right now. It was After desperation game. smokes, yeah. right? Three out of their, or four out of their five heroes just don't really do anything. Yeah. They just don't have the farm. They haven't kept up with the pace of the game. And it just felt like they were way too content to farm. Mm -hmm. Their Keeper of the Light was probably like, I'm really close to Axe. Let's wait for that. Slardar was saying probably, uh, I'm really close to the Blink Dagger. So they just had to wait. And during that time period, NP got so aggressive around the map. So many different smokes uh, targeted. Right after that, they take a tower. They push the advantage forward. And Fnatic... I mean, we were talking about this before the series, though. It's the inherent problem with Fnatic that we see right now is that both the supports are rather greedy support styles. Yamate, known as more of a core player, has been playing rather greedy support, and Febby, also known as a greedier support. And we definitely saw that. It, it's both the picks as well as the play styles. Neither Disruptor and Keeper of the Light are heroes that you think of that are like, okay, they combo up with the Slardar, and they're going to go and get a whole bunch of early kills, but... Uh, it is also a bit of playstyle. Yeah, I, you're only awesome. your two playmakers in this game. Your real playmakers are your disruptor and your slaughter. Your slaughter had such a rough game. He was level five for a long period of time. Picked up the blink dagger on the 22 minute mark, so he couldn't really do anything. Yamate, I mean, he's a disruptor kind of running around without his uh, without his partner. We talked about it early on. If they're going to have a good game, it's going to be on the heels of the slaughter and the disruptor working together. But they were never really able to get online, and so you're in a position where, as a disruptor player. You're just you're sitting there, you're just walking around, occasionally dropping wards, hiding behind heroes, and you immediately get gone on. You have to throw down those reactionary ultimates, and by that time you're already dead. You're not able to get the ring off. Yeah, most of the time, he was just sitting there, and it wasn't really there wasn't anything happening besides NP just kind of farming away. You get back underway here. Eternal Levy gonna go ahead and TP up to the top lane, keep some pressure there while uh, his team. Helps push out mid. So they've got 45 seconds left on the Medusa and a good 20 seconds at least before they feel any power of Fnatic to be able to stop this push. Nice jump forward there from Eternal Envy, seeing the opportunity to get that extra pick. Yamate not respecting the distance that Eternal Envy would go to secure an extra kill. Now they're going to be able to get that lane of racks for free for sure. And we'll still have to see whether or not they're going to buy back on the Medusa. 25 seconds left, but the Slardar and the Keeper of the Light just coming up now. And NB. Immediately going to signal his team to start going mid. As 3v5, they really don't want to take this fight. 
it seems like they're just going to get uh, potentially a melee rax here for free. Flip buys a bit of time, but that double damage allowed AUI to so quickly wipe through these buildings. Right now, Fnatic, they've got to make a stand. It's going to be two lanes down of melee rax. And Roshan is up as well. NP, everything's in their hands. Two lanes of racks down, back up, get the big objective of Roshan. I'm sure they still have some uh, big ticket items that they can grab as well. It looks like AEY's got like 3k gold in the bank. Eternal Levy actually has 4k. He is going to be going for the Octarine rather than the Radiance that. build, it seems. I like that in a game like this. Because he's got um, a damage dealer in Slark. Yeah, they're, and they're so far ahead right now. Yeah. It would make him really tanky, just the raw HP that he'd get from it as well. Sure. Fnatic already have a hard time killing any of the cores as they're going to make an aggressive step forward, but unfortunately for them, it is now nighttime. They've been hesitant to move outside of their base during nighttime before. Charge going to come on to Mushi as Rose <laughs> thinks twice about it. The rest of his team, not that fast. Maybe he was just thinking, ah, I'm just getting some vision on him for now. I mean, Rose is so tanky, actually. Necronomicon plus Solar Crest, he's got 2,100 HP. As a support spirit breaker, it's not going to go down easily. Oh. So with that solar crest, they'll easily be able to take down Roshan. That'll be just the second Roshan, so only an Aegis for NP, but seems to be more than enough to uh, to make this a game where Fnatic require a miracle to be able to have a comeback. Yeah, he's rapidly closing in on the level 25 talent. The two seconds extra of the Searing Chains. Gold for they are going to get a BKB out of Mushi, it seems. He can buy it now, though maybe he wants to save up for buyback still. No, I think you... I you honestly just think you play for it. Yeah. You school, it. If your team is already in a position where the Medusa has to buy back in a game like this, I'm imagining the rest of Fnatic have already died. Yeah. That's a big problem, though, right? Because this BKB does not add a whole lot of damage to the Medusa's arsenal. She's already been uh, looking a bit lackluster against these very tanky heroes of NP. Yeah. SVG picked up a BKB as well. <laughs> so we can go ahead, blink, frostbite, BKB, and let that freezing field go. You've got two of the least enjoyable supports to play in the game when you're behind, Crystal Maiden and Disruptor. And one of them is going to have a great game, as at bottom, they are going to be able to hit the crush. Back. But Eternal Levy, dance around with that sleight of fist. Now has the plus two seconds on Searing Chains. At mid. Bit of pressure there, but I think the Slark is just seeing if he can actually force some sort of big ability to be used. Maybe Mushi drops the Stone Gaze, and then for that next 90 seconds, they feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, and AUI going to get jumped on, but again, has the BKB, unafraid of anything as Mushi going to get poked and prodded. As it looks like NP a little bit hesitant to try to force an engagement, but the time might be soon. Slark perhaps looking for one support that's going to be trying to push out this top lane and instead be met by Mushi. Yeah, there are just sentries everywhere right now as Envy going to chance going up, starts the initiation on a Mushi. He's going to be able to get some damage out. But it's just, Fnatic actually can't really do much to respond. Ohio is kind of sitting on the side waiting for his Blink Dagger to come up already. Mushi's been dropped so low, he's going to be able to keep that Medusa in place for quite some time until they hit the crush. Now the vacuum comes out, and they are going to be able to get away with Eternal Envy. The turnaround happens with the big wall. Once again, the offlane from NP just comes in at the perfect time. They'll lock down Mushi as well. Pops the Manta, pops BKB, still cannot get back to the fountain. And that'll be no buyback for NP. A great static storm, but it means nothing if there's no damage to follow it up. NP very easily take this game. What an absolute shellacking is. NP just rolled through Fnatic. Fnatic only taking one tower in a game like this. Just were not able to utilize their lineup whatsoever. Felt like they were way too happy being passive in a game like that. And NP, at the end of the game, none of their cores have a death. So well done by the entire team, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, it seems like we, we were talking about on the panel 
we were talking about NP, they seem to be a little bit more of a farm oriented team. We weren't sure how strong they were going to be in this patch. That seems very five man and, and very focused, but NP with this playstyle that they just brought, right? They just very clearly were able to get an early lead with some aggression and then they just built it and built it and played such a patient playstyle that allowed uh, allowed comebacks just to be nearly impossible for Fanatics. So we're going to get our thoughts from the panel in a moment, but first we're going to head to a short break for this game number one. Game one is already entered into the history books and it's Team NP who come out on top as they win their opening match of a best of three elimination match. Remember, the loser of this one is done in Genting and they're thrown off the mountain. In fact, we're going to put them in the cable car and send them down the hill. Uh, but both teams are still in with a shout. NP with a lead. Let's break it down now with our expert analysis. And we'll start with... Uh, I think we'll start with Owen. An, an eternal envy. Yeah, I mean... you were raving about the Ember. We kind of were before we said, you know, we were what, what, what are they going to pick? Yeah. What could they pick? Ember is evidently strong in this patch, even though surprisingly maybe not... We didn't see as much as we thought we would yeah. do yesterday, but in the game we did, it was amazing. And, of course, Envy, as we said in the past, is, is safe lane Ember or whichever lane he played, he played it in a, a, with Secret and such. It was amazing. It was entertaining to watch. Yep. This, it just seemed like he'd stepped it up. He wasn't making the mistakes that he was of the past. You know, he'd have brilliant games on Ember, but he'd still kind of make questionable plays. This time around, he was getting himself in, getting himself out. He was duking things left, right, center. He was duking the crushes, remnanting back out and back in. He was dodging being glimpsed back by being in the slight of fist, being invulnerable. It was uh, just really flashy and really impressive to watch. Do you think he gets maligned a little bit by the mistakes? Is it because he's, he's such a flashy player, he's going to make mistakes by nature of the way it's, he plays? I just think it's a lot of people remember the mistakes yeah, he makes more because, than stuff that he did well. because they're just so entertaining. You know, they, they're their mistakes. You're like, <laughs> what is he doing? But, I mean, in, in a game like this, there was... Uh, next to none. It yeah. was pretty flawless performance from him and, of course, just complimented from the team as a whole. The yeah. team just played brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, Fnatic fanboy over there, how did you uh, rate the Team MP win? I mean, they, Fnatic, okay, first of all, MP played amazingly. Like Owen said, they all executed on a very high level. I loved the Helm of Dominator pickup by MSS as well. You know, AUI, flawless performance on the Slark. Just great all-around team play. Um, Fnatic, 
just seemed very determined to prove me wrong in all aspects. <laughs> you know, they, uh, they heard that you'd picked them. They picked absolutely opposite of what I hoped they would. The players that I highlighted as potentially being able to stand out didn't do so. Uh, just an all-around all disappointing performance by them. Mm. Uh, and uh, we talked a lot of theory crafting before. Mm -hmm. What did you make of this one? It was a pretty standard draft from NP, but the things that they did with their items I think were great. Um, even Envy did alter his build a little bit, went for a blade mail instead of the typical radiance there, just for safety, armor, survivability things, because he did have to worry about Sardar. Uh, Corrosive Haze, got it, yes. yes. That's the um, one. Like Mouse said, the, the Helma Dominator on the Darkseer was an amazing pickup because it gives him another Iron Shell target. I saw a clip of it on Reddit just last night. You vacuum onto the center while you stun, so you give yourself an AOE stun on a hero that normally doesn't have it. But there was a period of the game where Darkseer had the most farm out of anybody on the map, and that's because with that Centaur, now you can just put an Iron Shell on it, you can run it anywhere where the lane is, and you get a full creep wave, and it's completely safe to do so. So not only does it give you more disable, but it also gives you more lane presence, more farm, all the good stuff that Darkseer wants. Mm. Disappointing performance from Fnatic overall. It, it was, and uh, I, I think that's kind of certain some of the players as well. It, it felt like Yamate had a really tough game. Mm. I mean, he was very far behind on the Queen of Pain. He was hitting the Sonic Waves, it's just he wasn't getting the kills. It, it kind of, it was a little too late really when he was, he was coming in with the rotations and stuff. Obviously, he had a good lane at the start. He was finding something, but he wasn't shutting down MSS. I mean, the Darkseer was finding just as much in that lane, if not even more, and uh, it just felt that Yamate was unable to transition what he got in the lane into anything really useful in the mid game. You mean in, in, in your, your dream. Inner dream the yeah. Oh, in your dream, sorry. Yeah. Yamate was I, 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 sorry. Yeah. That being said, Yamate's performance was also disappointing. I yeah. think uh, what illustrated best was the, the gank they could have had on Eternal Envy on the bottom lane next to... It was like the one of the jungle camps. Yeah, where they one had a of ward the jungle on camps. They had a ward vision on, on him. He didn't know they were there. They were standing uphill. They had plenty of time. Ohio and, he, uh, and him comes in. He misses the ultimate, Ohio doesn't blink in and stun him. It's yeah. They walked low ground where Envy could see them before they started casting the spells. Yeah. If you're going on an Ember like that, they're always going to be very easy to fright. As soon as you see a hero, he's going to jump out. You've got to go ulti first, let the Slar blink stun, and then follow up with Kinetic Field. That should have been a kill. Mm -hmm. They made a lot of mistakes like that. Yeah, I'm expecting more from them as well. I know, I know yeah. it's early in the team's life and chemistry and everything else has got to come together, yeah, but, but you expect more individually. Yeah, exactly. You? Individual yeah. performance needs to be on the highest level still. Yeah, you can't be in a tournament like this and just make these basic mistakes that not, e not even you, Paul, would do no, I would. in your pub games. I, I would. But it's, it's not just the mistakes is why they lost. It was a lot about the lane pressure. We haven't even talked about Rose yet. Uh, played yep. Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker plus Darkseer dual off lane. It's really nasty for those reasons that we brought up. Like, the, you charge, you have Iron Shell and potentially two melee heroes. You can get either person out if they're in trouble with Surge. And then they did a lot of Iron Shell, the Spirit Breaker, TP him in the safe lane and get a charge kill. And then they did it again. And then they did it again. And then he ganked a different lane. It was basically perfect for roaming. Like, Rose did really really good with his roaming in that game, and that was what put them so far behind. And maybe you could blame Fnatic's draft by going for Keeper of the Light as well as Disruptor, that they're kind of weak at shutting down hyper-aggression early game. Um, but then they were so far behind that they made mistakes, and either way, that's, that's not excusable. Even if you're losing the game, you still got to nail those, those important ults. Mm. We're, we're going to get into it after the break in terms of the next draft, but I just want to briefly touch on it before we do move on. Uh, and they've got to change things up now. Uh, have they got to react more to MP in the way they draft, or do you feel like they can they can maybe lead the draft? I think they did react there, and it went bad, personally. Um, yeah, I think they reacted because they missed some of the bans that were obvious. I mean, we were talking about the Ember being a, a straightforward phase two ban, and then they completely missed that. I would agree. I think that one was a was a huge miss there. Uh, it was very obvious with the darks here, um, but. I think Coddle as well as Disruptor together are not really the right mix of mm -hmm. heroes. It doesn't really give Febby strengths. They basically wanted to get this like 15, 20 minute advantage and then death push. But uh, and Spirit Breaker had already been picked up and Spirit Breaker was so good against the lineup that Fnatic had. Sure, you can argue that, that the Disruptor is annoying against the Spirit Breaker, but it's not ever going to kill the Spirit yeah. Breaker. It's just, you know, all these targets that he could just roam freely on the Disruptor himself if he didn't have Glimpse up. The Keeper of the Light, Queen of Pain has a hard time, especially when she becomes underfarmed like she did. It's just, what a great game for a Spirit Breaker. And then he gets the Necromicon to have the Dusa yeah. be pretty lackluster against him yeah. as well. That was a really good choice. Yeah, just really smart itemization all across the place yeah. for NP. Slark pick was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, AY played it great. Very defensive, great initiations. NP looked like a really good team there. And, and it was good to see as well, because as we said before, Aoi on the Slark, it's not a, it's not a hero play combination that you, you expect to see. Yep. I think on Dota buff record, he'd only played it once in the past, but I, he played it absolutely fantastically. As you said, the build was, was brilliant. Uh, after he got the BKB, the, the Medusa just kind of just became kind of this stat sponge that, that Aoi just punched to pieces, and then he was walking around with an insane amount of additional agility, and he was punching down the towers. Yeah. All right.
Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we are headed to a break right now. Don't forget, no, you don't want to go too far away because Game 2 Draft is just around the corner. It's going to be a big one for the neck. They have to pull this one back to stay in it here at ESL1 Genting 2017. We'll see you in a bit.